We've been with 8 Platoon in Spin Baldock for a couple of days. The border with Pakistan has been quiet. Pop down, see if you can see anything on the horizon. Still, they keep eyes on in the lab as the training continues. I got sheep. Yeah, I got tractor. Uh, hey, is that a camel out there? There's a pretty good chance. Holy fuck, I've never seen a camel before. How the fuck have you never really? seen a camel? Man, look at the size of that camel. That's huge. All right, guys. What you're here to do is to listen to my version of what happened on the 3rd. From this low wall here, all the way to here, from the school, and from these compounds here, the enemy had us in a U-shaped ambush. This was a prepared kill zone. Sergeant Scott Fawcett briefs the replacements with his personal account of September 3rd, Operation Medusa. So once we got the casualty collection point up and going, it is mayhem. You have wounded coming in, you still have a battle ongoing. You are taking stress casualties and you have taken dead. You have to stay focused on what you're doing. I know you're tired. I know you're mentally stressed out. I know you're terrified. All right? But the enemy was still engaging us even out in the wadi. All right? So when you get out of the back of that boat and all the casualties are being carried in, and all the battlefield noises are coming in, you still have a job to do. And you have to do it. All right. Canadians have been holed up in the base, but visiting American engineers need support in the town of Spinbolding. Some of A platoon are assigned to protect them. There's some anxiety. This is the first operation for the replacements. pictures and stuff and sit, sit, sit around situation reports basically as to how it was coming along but they wanted to see for themselves how it was doing. Eventually Afghan police working from this station will try to control the region's drug trafficking. Get crash? While the Americans tour the construction site, the Canadians keep watch outside. That crazy eight badge is not military issue. That's just for eight platoon veterans. Sergeant Chris Jeeps leads the operation. You constantly move, you don't want to stand in one spot in case there's any chance of uh, sniper fire. And it doesn't create a, a good target for the enemy to hit you with. So. There was maybe two occasions where uh, my heart rate sped up a little bit. A couple of Afghani guards wanted to come in and they didn't understand why they couldn't and we wanted them to stay back until we can confirm who they were. Um, they, I guess, feel they don't need to confirm themselves, but we, we really, really do. And so uh, they had a problem with that. My first, I mean, 
first experience with having to to worry about possibly having to pull the trigger. You were ready to pull the trigger if you had to? Absolutely. There's nothing on this planet that would make me want to leave my wife and little girl without a husband and father. So that's what it boils down to. I'm here to protect myself, my fellow soldiers, and my family. The mission is a success. Some soldiers said they heard gunfire, warning shots. I didn't. But a few days later, there was an attack. On the same road we had traveled to town, an IED, an improvised explosive device, exploded under an Afghan national policeman's car. He was rushed to the base. Roger, we'll be bringing him in by gators momentarily. Do we have an ETA on that boat when it's coming in? You'll get it when we get it. Turn on whiskey, Roger. He would lose one foot and almost the other. Lift! Good work, guys. You walk on over, you can hand the IV bag to the medic. I'm gonna hop up here with the doc. You need any more back here, or are you good? Uh, good back here, if I, yeah. For the replacements, it's been an eventful week. Their first mission, a paramedical procedure, and finally their orders. They are to head back to Kandahar Airfield, then on to Panjwe. Do we still have that travel piece? At the airfield, 8 Platoon hooks up with Lieutenant Jeremy Hiltz, who's been on leave. It's been a quiet month on Highway 1 through Kandahar City, and that makes people nervous. The most possible uh, threat to us today is in the, in the vicinity of Sirache, right here. Okay, there is a uh, ambush position set up. Uh, they did get Lieutenant Hiltz's briefing is blunt and chilling. Everything that can happen to us out there is a variation of one thing. We get attacked, okay? Adjust as we go through and I'll give direction as well as the section commanders and crew commanders will give direction as we're going along, okay? Are there any other points from the section commanders? Okay, when we get through Panjway at last light, that's our favorite time for hit. So be prepared for anything. That's all I got, sir. Okay, like I said before, I'll support any decision you guys make. I'm not with you in that vehicle, your section commanders, aren't right necessarily up there making the same decision you guys got to do. You see something that doesn't give you a warm and fuzzy, escalate as you see fit. If you don't know your ROEs, <laughs> talk to your section commanders and clarify anything, okay? Once we leave this gate, it's game on until we get back into here, okay? It'll be a long time, who knows, okay? It's good times, boys, you get the soldier, it's awesome. Okay, you got guys beside you, like I said. Let's get our heads into the game and let's do the job. Right on, good to go. Mount up. This is a volunteer army. This is what they signed up for. There is more a feeling of excitement than fear as the convoy heads outside the wire to Panjurek. 